Hello, my name is Dr. Daniel Cottom. I'm a minimally invasive bariatric surgeon practicing in Salt Lake City, Utah. Today, I want to present to you the case of a middle-aged female who has the laparoscopic adjustable gastric band. She did very well with the laparoscopic adjustable gastric band and for four years she lost all her weight and at the end of the four years her BMI was 22. However, she suffered from recurrent bouts of slipping of the left band. On the third time the laparoscopic adjustable gastric band slipped, we elected to remove it. She wanted to maintain her weight loss and we offered her alternatives. The first alternative we offered her was the sleep gastrectomy. She felt that was too invasive. The second alternative was a gastric bypass, which I recommended against because I thought it would cause too much weight loss. The third option that she elected to pursue was that of gastric implication. This is a new experimental procedure that after telling her the risks and benefits of it, she elected to pursue. Today we're going to present her case to you, show her surgery through the miracle of the internet. The first thing that impresses you as you look around the abdominal cavity is the large amount of scar tissue left over from the previous operations that the patient has had. In order to remove the scar tissue, the first step is to remove the lap band. Here we're cutting across the lap band tubing that's attached to the laparoscopic band port. And now we're going to take this piece out of the abdominal cavity. Now we're going to take down the scar tissue between the liver on the left and the lap band underneath and we do this with the help of a special device called a harmonic scalpel which cuts and stops bleeding all at once. Now we're again cutting down on the lap band and removing scar tissue from around it. We're grasping the bus the buckle of the lap band and unbuckling the lap band. We're going to remove it in pieces and here's another piece of the lap band and we're removing that piece out of the abdominal cavity. Now here's the last piece of the lap band and we're also taking it out of the abdominal cavity. Now that we've taken down the lap band, we can begin to take down the scar tissue from the old surgeries to the stomach. And here we're taking down some of that old scar tissue using the device called the harmonic scalpel. Now we're taking down the scar tissue that attaches the stomach to the liver on your left and the stomach on your right. Once we finish that, we can turn our attention to what we call the greater curve of the stomach or the part of the stomach on the right that has the blood vessels attached to it. These blood vessels run through fat called omentum. Using the harmonic scalpel we can divide those blood vessels that's found in that fat called omentum and try to enter the space called the lesser sac behind the stomach. Here we've entered the lesser sac and that's the empty space behind the stomach. So that's below the stomach there and we are simply following the lesser sac and the edge of the stomach taking down all those blood vessels called short gastric blood vessels up all the way till the stomach meets the esophagus. Once we finish taking down all those short gastric vessels we can now begin the part of the operation called gastric plication. Here we're starting the imbrication portion of the surgical procedure. What we're doing is taking big bites of the stomach and pushing that greater curve or outer portion of the stomach in on itself. This stops the stomach from expanding whenever you take large meals and so you get full eating very small meals. We're doing this with the aid of a device called the endo stitch which allows us to suture in the abdominal cavity very very easily. So there's the endo stitch passing the needle back and forth and tying our knot. This is the first knot. We're going to take several sutures as you see down the stomach on the greater curve in order to take the greater curve and push it in on itself. Again, the greater curve is the part of the stomach which expands when you eat a good meal. So I'm taking the ability of the stomach to expand in the instance where the patient eats a big meal. 
so they get full very easily. Now we're taking another bite. Again, this is an interrupted bite, meaning they don't run together. And I am going to fold the outer portion of the stomach in on itself. There you go, seeing the stomach fold in on itself. Here's another bite, taking full thickness through the stomach. And we're gonna go to the other side and fold that greater curve in on itself once more. One more bite, and we're gonna continue this down quite a ways in order that the stomach through its entire length, which normally expands on a big meal, gets plicated in so it can expand to eat a new larger meal. This is different than the sleeve gastrectomy in the sense that it is reversible. The way that I would reverse this procedure if the patient couldn't tolerate it is simply to go back and remove all these sutures which I've placed in the stomach. And in that way, this procedure is totally reversible. And this is the final suture as we're going down the stomach. Now we're going to follow this up with what we call a running suture. A running suture starts at one point and goes without stopping for a, quite a distance and we're going to fold some more stomach in and it, in on itself. And again, if the patient couldn't tolerate the procedure or had nausea and vomiting after surgery, in order to reverse this, all we would is go back and cut the suture and her stomach would go totally back to normal. And again, you see us plicating even more stomach in on itself. Now, inside the stomach, what we've done for this last layer is we place something called a bougie, and a bougie is a device which stents the stomach open, so we can't suture the stomach down too tightly. And you can see the nice line that we've created down there, and all the part of the stomach which expands has now been taken away. And you can see how that's lying very nicely with all the expansion portion of the stomach being folded in on itself and the sutures lying nicely out of the way. At this point, the procedure is done. The patient can now recover in the hospital over the next 18 hours and going home eating and drinking a liquid diet and following up with us in the office in approximately one week. Thank you for the opportunity of presenting this video today. There are three people that I can recommend who know this procedure well. Myself, Dr. Daniel Cottam here at the Salt Lake Regional Medical Center, my good friend, Dr. Sunil Sharma at the University of Florida, and another good friend of mine, Dr. Mahendra Narwadia in Ahmedabad, India. We'll give their contact information at the end of the video. If you have any other questions about this case or how it can apply to you and your weight loss goals, please contact one of us at the provided information. Thank you and good luck on your weight loss journey.